Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 6th of October. U.S. official Sherman meets Indian Foreign Secretary in New Delhi discusses bilateral regional issues. Crowds gathered as Kabul passport office reopens in Afghanistan after Taliban takeover. And Baloch activists hold anti-Pakistan protest in Germany against atrocities in Balochistan. And now for all the details. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, who is in India on a three-day visit, met Indian Foreign Secretary Harshwadan Sringla in capital New Delhi on Wednesday, aimed at strengthening ties. The two officials took stock of bilateral issues, discussed Afghanistan's situation and reiterated commitment for a free, open, inclusive Indo-Pacific region. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman on Wednesday met India's Foreign Secretary Harshwadan Sringla in capital New Delhi. Both the leaders had bilateral meeting and discussed issues of regional interest, especially the evolving situation in Afghanistan, as well as developments at the UN. The two officials reiterated commitment for a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region, including through continued cooperation under the Quad. They also took stock of bilateral issues ranging from COVID-19, security and defence, economic, climate and clean energy and people-to-people -people linkages. Over the past few uh, decades, but uh, more in the past few years, I think our relationship has seen uh, uh, a very, very steady growth in both in substance, pace and momentum. We are both believers in a free, open, interconnected and resilient Indo-Pacific region and we both know that the best way to preserve peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific and around the world is by upholding and strengthening the rules-based international order. The development comes nearly two weeks after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, during his visit to the U.S., held bilateral talks with U.S. President Joe Biden. The two leaders discussed key areas of cooperation with Quad leaders, especially in relation to maritime developments and otherwise in the Indo-Pacific region. Sherman is on a three-day visit to India to review India-U.S. bilateral agenda and discuss regional and global issues. During her visit from October 5 to 7, she will also hold talks with India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar and National Security Advisor Ajit Doval. India's paramilitary border security force is on high alert after drones were spotted near India-Pakistan border in northern Punjab state, a senior official said on Wednesday. Security personnel opened fire to shoot the drones down, but they managed to fly back. India's Border Security Force or BSF along with the local police on Wednesday carried out search operations in Gurdaspur in northern Punjab state after drones were spotted in the district near the India-Pakistan border. A senior BSF official said drones were found flying near the border areas in three different locations on the intervening night of October 5 and 6. The BSF personnel on duty engaged them with firing, but they managed to fly back. The forces are on high alert to avert any attacks, the official said. और तुरंत जो ही कोई गतिविधि पाकिस्तान की तरफ से देखते हैं तुरंत उसको फायरते हैं एंगेज करते हैं और हर तरीके से पाकिस्तान की चाल को नाकामयाब करने के लिए पूरी कोशिश की जा रही है दिस कम्स एज सिक्योरिटी एजेंसीज हैव ब्लेम मिलिटेंट्स इन पाकिस्तान आर यूजिंग ड्रोन्स टू ड्रॉप आर्म्स एंड एमिनेशन एंड नारकोटिक्स अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर इन पंजाब एंड जम्मू एंड कश्मीर मेनी सच अटेम्प्ट्स हैव बीन फॉइल्ड बाय द बीएसएफ इन रीसेंट डेज the paramilitary force has also been training villagers in border areas to identify, report and handle drone activity. Earlier this year, at least two security personnel were injured when drones were used to drop explosives at the Indian Air Force Station in Jammu Airport. Hundreds of Afghans crowded outside the passport office in Kabul on Wednesday, despite notice that distribution of passports would only begin on Saturday. They said the bleak economic outlook in the country following the Taliban takeover drives their desire to leave. 
Hundreds of people flocked to the passport office in Kabul on Wednesday, despite notice by the Taliban that it would reopen from Saturday to issue the documents, and initially only for those who had already applied. The crowd pressed against a large concrete barrier trying to hand documents to an official who stood atop it in a scene reminiscent of the chaos at Kabul airport in the last stages of evacuation after the withdrawal of U.S. troops. The official urged them to return home and come back on Saturday. The applicants said the bleak economic outlook drives their desire to leave. Because the bad situation in Afghanistan, no job, no work. It's not a good condition for us to live in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, Simon Gass, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson's special envoy, met Taliban leaders, including Abdul Ghani Baradar and Amir Khan Muttaki in Afghanistan on Tuesday. They discussed the humanitarian crisis and ways to prevent the country from becoming an incubator for militants, the UK's Foreign Office said. Poverty and hunger have worsened since the Islamist movement took over the war-torn country, which already suffered from drought and the COVID-19 pandemic. The Taliban have said they welcome international aid, though many donors have frozen their assistance after they took power. Pakistan has always hailed the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC project as a game-changer for the growth of the region. However, CPEC continues to ring alarm bells among the people of Gilgit Baltistan. Locals in the illegally occupied region say the project has only led to destruction and provided no economic opportunities to them so far. Although the Pakistan government calls the China Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC a game changer to boost the economy, Locals in Gilgit Baldistan claim they have been kept bereft of the benefits of the multi billion dollar infrastructure project. Locals and activists in the illegally occupied region have raised concern that instead of economic opportunities, the CPAC has only brought destruction, and despite being the gateway of the mega project, Gilgit Baldistan faces bigger losses. It only benefits Islamabad and Beijing, they have claimed. अगर सी पे ये क्या कहते हैं कराक्रम हाईवे को उठा के बाकी हंजा नगर में गिलगिट में देखेंगे तो गजर से बुरे बुरी हालत है कम्युनिकेशन की तो इस तरह का कोई रोड अगर बन जाता है सी पे के हवाले से कोई चीजें अगर होती है तो उसमें हम को बेनिफिशियरी होते हैं डायरेक्ट बेनिफिशियरी हम नहीं है The locals have also expressed concern about rising unemployment in the region despite it being the gateway of सी पे यहां वसाइल न होने की वजह से नौकरियां वफाक की तरफ से नौकरियां नहीं है कम है और हमारे पढ़े लिखे लड़के हजारों के हिसाब से सालाना फारिग होते हैं और प्राइवेट ऐसा वो नहीं है सेक्टर नहीं है जिससे हमारे बेरोजगारी खत्म हो तो हम कहते हैं अगर ऐसे प्रोजेक्ट आ गए तो हमारे लिए खुशकिस्मती है इलाके के लिए तरकी हो जाएगा हमारे पढ़े लिखे लड़के हैं किसी न किसी जगह पर बड़े बड़े उसमें एडजस्टमेंट हो जाएंगे और जो ये बदमनी है ये बेरोजगारी की वजह से भी The residents in Gilgit Baldistan have repeatedly raised their voices urging the Pakistan government to provide them jobs and businesses opportunities but blame Islamabad has consistently maintained an oppressive attitude towards them and has even ignored the basic demands Moving on Scores of Baloch activists staged a protest in Germany's Berlin city this past weekend against the fake encounters by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. They highlighted several innocent Baloch people have been targets of so-called counter-terrorism operations by Pakistan and have been killed after being forcibly disappeared. Scores of activists from the Baloch National Movement staged a protest in Germany's Berlin city this past weekend against fake encounters by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. The protesters blamed that Pakistan has continued to pursue its infamous kill and dump policy and its counterterrorism department or CTD has been forcibly disappearing innocent Baloch people before killing them in staged encounters in the name of counterterrorism operations. The protesters highlighted several cases of torture, abduction and extrajudicial killings in the region and urged the international community to intervene immediately to stop the ongoing Baloch genocide. 
Activists have long accused that Pakistani army and spy agencies have been carrying so-called military operations in the region with an aim to eliminate the Baloch people. They blame thousands have been internally displaced because of the army operations over the years. India's Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Stringla called on Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa on Tuesday before he wrapped up his four-day visit to the island nation to review the bilateral ties. During the meeting, Gotabaya assured New Delhi that his country would not be allowed to be used for any activity that could pose a threat to India's security, as he explained Colombo's ties with China in a comprehensive manner to Stringla and exchanged views with him on a wide range of issues, including post-pandemic economy revival. Beijing has been ramping up its presence in the island nation, investing billions of dollars in various infrastructure projects, including ports. The strategic Humban Tota port handed over to Beijing in 2017 on a 99-year lease has enhanced Beijing's presence on the island. On India's concerns over the 13th Amendment, President Rajpaksa pointed out the urgent need to understand the weaknesses as well as the strengths of the 13th Amendment while expressing a desire to revive the spirit of the relations of the 1960s and the 1970s. The 13th Amendment provides for devolution of power to the Tamil community in Sri Lanka. India has been pushing Sri Lanka to implement the 13th Amendment which was brought in after the Indo-Sri Lankan Agreement of 1987. Hindu devotees across India performed rituals and prayed for the ancestors' souls on the last day of Pitrapaksh or fortnight of ancestors on Wednesday amid coronavirus pandemic. Hindus believe the cycle of rebirth can cease if these sacred rituals are performed during the 16th lunar day period. Thousands of people across India took holy dips offered prayers and performed rituals on the last day of Pitrapaksh or ancestors' fortnight on Wednesday to pray for the souls of their ancestors. Hindus believe that paying homage to those who have passed away during the 16 lunar day period helps them attain liberation or moksha. Pilgrims were seen performing rituals of Pindan or offering to souls of their ancestors on the banks of Falgu River in eastern Gaya city. Many of them, however, violated the COVID-19 norms. ऐसी आस्था है कि इस पुण्य भूमि पर आकर जो अपने पितरों का तर्पण पिंडदान इत्यादि करेंगे, उनके पितरों की सद्गति भगवान करते हैं और परमात्मा अपने चरण शरण में स्थान दें। Meanwhile, similar scenes were witnessed in eastern Kolkata and Bhuvaneshwar cities where scores of devotees were seen performing sacred prayers and rituals. Pitrapaksh is followed by the start of Navratri or Nine Nights festival dedicated to the many incarnations of Hindu goddess Durga. Ganga mein tarpan ke maata pita ke liye har saal aate hain jo sab ka hota hai Hindu ya Bengali sab ke liye achcha hota hai. Devotees also get their head shaved to mark the mourning period. According to Hindu faith, it is believed that when humans die, their mortal body turns to dust whereas the soul remains until it does not find another mortal body to reside. The cycle of rebirth can cease and the soul can receive salvation if these sacred rituals are performed, the Hindus content. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. U.S. official Sherman meets Indian Foreign Secretary in New Delhi discusses bilateral regional issues. Crowds gather as Kabul passport office reopens in Afghanistan after Taliban takeover. And Baloch activists hold anti-Pakistan protest in Germany against atrocities in Balochistan. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.